Hey, T Gray here, Personal Wings. Uh, we got this free cordless polisher from Saker, and it is a DC 12 volt, 2000 milliamp hour rechargeable battery. Uh, they say it's a quality polisher, has six gears, so one to six levels for various waxes, sealants, and glazes. Supposedly easy installation, switch button, 145 millimeter sticky disc, and it comes with a small kit of accessories. Not as many as I saw on Amazon. This goes for a hundred bucks with a lot more pads and things that come with it. There's another competitor that has a slightly different design and ergonomics on the handle. And that goes for about 112 currently as of the filming of this video. So let's do an unboxing. So what we got, little pouch. So I totally misread what this was. Yeah, I thought it was a pouch. Uh, there is a pouch, but this is actually your buffing apron. Comes with it, very chintzy, cheap, so don't expect it to last very long, but it'll protect some of your body parts from splashing. Nice. I probably want more of a battery than this thing, though. Instruction manual, a sample 2000 grit sandpaper. Then you got a little faux sheepskin with the loop on the back for the hook. And then you got a dimpled pad for polishing. You got a flat polishing pad. What else we got in here? We got some little bonnets for polishing. Then we got a battery, 2000 milliamp hours. It says to charge it before using. It will generate heat. Make sure it cools down about 15 minutes um, before charging it. Please switch the power button off before inserting battery. Please adjust speed to one to two before using. And please do not immerse the polisher in liquid. Shall do. Got the charger and... So Rich is having the darndest of times getting the, the battery out. He had it out. We were trying to figure out. He did have it out once. I will give him that. I did see that he pulled it out, but then he like clicked it in. I guess it went in there pretty good. Yeah, it's but in there pretty good. This is truth in advertising. They're, oh, how... it just, they're just new, so it's hard to push in there. So there we go. If you do have a problem, the way I figured that out, see how they go in there tight, which is good because you don't want anything to come out easy. But if you push it on both sides, from this side, and then it pulls out easier. Yeah. So that's easier. We're trying to find where you actually plug in the charger. There it is. Aha! On the battery itself. On the battery. That's where you have to plug it in right there. There's no external. Which is kind of neat because if you have extra batteries, you can plug this one in here, do all your work, keep another battery out and charge it. So you don't have to always charge through the handle, which would mean you couldn't use the, the polisher while your battery is being charged. So we're gonna charge that puppy up and we're gonna try it out on our airplane. The device itself, check this out. Again, we're not being paid for this. It's just a sample that they sent us they liked our new vite polishing videos so it looks like a makita right it's makita colors and everything i'm a makita guy myself switch you got the variable speeds right there on the side has that nice kind of like rubberish little horn right there too and i assume the handle is kind of an extension of this the ergonomics for where this button are i can see being kind of annoying over time just a little rough compared to the rubberiness of that. Uh, the heft is good, feels nice. We'll have to see what it's like once we charge it. So yeah, there's a Saker polisher that's cordless. Okay, so we went flying, had to go pick up a CJ, Citation Jet, and flew our 206 over, which is what I'm gonna test the polishing on. And this is the Saker mobile polishing device. It charged. Uh, shows green supposedly on the charger once it's done charging. It says that there's some additional LEDs that display when you're running it right on the side. So green, you're good. Um, red and orange will all show and it'll just keep tricking down as the battery gets used up. So that is it. I started on two. You're supposed to start on one or two. And you just hook up something on it that you want to clean. Right now, what I'm going to test is just putting one of these bonnets on. I assume I put 
one of the foam pads on the Velcro. And then I wrap this around that. We have these different bonnets, right? You got a little bit of a finer blue one. You got this more coarse blue one. You have this very thin, kind of like the shower cap slash booty slash you're a surgeon, nurse um, ones. The manual doesn't say anything about what each of them do. So you're kind of left on your own or expecting to have experience doing this. I don't, so woe be me. But my dad has some experience and this is one of the fake uh, sheepskin lamb's wool. And this would be a bit more of a coarse one versus a standard cotton fabric. And then of course you have your, your pad. So what we're gonna do for right now is aim to just pop this on. So we have a base, right? And see if this will go around. Wonder if that might be too much or if you even need to have the base. Who knows? Let's see. Uh, I'll stand back. There seems to be enough clearance for any of these covers to go on, but it seems like it's, let's see. There you go. Ooh, Ooh that's nice. It's like a little massager too. Feels good. So let's, let's try it. Come on. What I'm gonna do, so what we're doing right now, is you see we got some of this, this gunk up here. Let's look at this. Oh yeah. Look at that fun gunk. So I'm gonna go get some of our new Vite. Actually do the new power to... That did not feel good. Oh, that hurt a little bit. Kind of banged my elbow. I got my funny elbow. You know, let's just see what a little bit of the new power to I'm using right now. So I'm just gonna splooge a little bit onto this rag. Got some on the rag. And let's try like right around here, right? So we got some rivets and stuff, which are kind of a pain in the ass with the rags we found out. This stuff does a pretty darn good job just on its own. So like there's that, and then if I take a clean rag in there, coming back in, that's how that looks. It just looks great. You know, outside of like they even, Depending on the rivets, you know, these are painted over rivets. They don't have like the hard edge. A lot of these, these have more of a indent. These ones are the ones that have the really sharp drop off right at the edge of the, right at the edge of the rivet. And so it's really hard and you still pick up that, that dirt layer. So we'll drop that rag there. Let's grab our little device. Oh, it's so bright. That is probably way too damn much. This is going to be fun. This is probably going to fling all over me. It's going to be awesome. Cannot wait. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dabble around. There you go. That way it's at least spread out a little bit more. Kick it on. Let's roll that knob up. Oh. I'm trying not to push too hard. Oh my gosh, my eyeballs. I don't know if it's the fumes from the new Vite. Exhaustion, the bright ass sun, or little micro dots of new power getting in my eyeball. But my eye is definitely rubbing around. All right, so not sure if this is the best option, approach of using the new Vite, new power like that. So let's stop that, okay. Now, a tricky thing is there's no, like how am I supposed to put this down, right? If I put it down upside down, well, it's really rocky and rolly. There's no super flat spot on it because the ergonomics to make it feel good in your hand. And this is rounded, so then it just kind of rocks. I can't put it on the side because then I'm gonna be putting this on to dirt and stuff. So I can't stand it up because it's gonna flop forward so really, 
it's kind of an awkward, I don't like that feature of it. That's frustrating. Yeah, so I have to like carefully balance it and hope I don't knock it. All right, now that I've polished it, let's see if we take a clean spot and see what happens when I wipe. Looks like it, you know, I went back over my original spot. Oh my gosh, this blinding sun is just amazing. You know, it's, if I come through with the rag, it's kind of a nice way to do it. Come through, clean it off. I don't know how many rags I'm gonna have to like go through using this process. You know, I kept reusing the rags in their original New Power video. I would just like almost saturate this whole rag, add more New Power, keep going, clean, 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 and then wipe down after I let it dry. That seemed to work pretty well. What I'm curious about is if I can get um, with that tool to get around these rivets that are a bit more of these hard edges. And I've got some more over here. So let's let's reposition the camera and see if we can get this shot. And maybe I won't be blinded by the beautiful sun we have. Again, I'm gonna kind of hit this area and see how it works running a splooge of the new power onto here. And there we go. So we just got, you can see how much I put on there like that. And then I'm gonna go tap, 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 I could be doing this all wrong, right? So just kind of experimenting right now. Very busy airport, this Montgomery Field. Montgomery Gibbs Field. My dad is up above trying to get our chart databases to sync up on that G1000 NXI. That's been frustrating. All right. So I'm not trying to put a ton of pressure because it feels like if I put a lot of pressure, it kind of stalls out. So I'm kind of letting the tool do the work. coming through. See, in some ways I just feel like I'm smearing the muck everywhere. So I'm really just trying to hit the spots I already put polish on. All right, and the switch spot is interesting. It's like right there by your palm. So you can't actuate it with your thumb or anything. Again, I have to carefully, precariously balance it if I don't want it to go touching the ground and picking up a bunch of dirt and grit off the ground. So now I'm gonna come through. I mean, in terms of it helping kind of like not make me have to sit there rub and swirl back and forth, this is pretty nice. Again, I don't think it solves, oh. Yeah, you still, the one, the rivets that are super indented that don't have a, a gentle valley of the paint, you still have the issue. You still like need, you're gonna need a toothbrush or sit there on each one with your fingernail or come up with some little tool that you could put around fabric, like maybe even like a pen, um, a big pen or a, a fat wide, like a wider aperture ballpoint shell. You could put that and just go doo -doo, doo -doo and hit all of them like that. A little tedious. But I know one thing, this new power is just incredible. Like how well it works to take away the gunk on your bird. It's really impressive. Very incredible product. Not sure what's in it, but definitely makes it a prettier, prettier aircraft when you do this and clean up. And we have the oil separator, which helps reduce the amount of the blowing out of the oil that comes out onto this, um, onto the underbelly. But yeah, I mean, all in all, looks, looks quite nice. I like, I like. Got some interesting things I don't remember seeing before in terms of gunk. So that, those spots, I would just manually hand hit with the new power, so. I'm just applying it straight to those zones. There we go, that's taking it right off. So 
So I'll take it off right there. Yeah, overall, seems like a useful tool for this approach to at least pre-clean, pre kind of rub and shmee up all the gunk that's happening on the aircraft. So we'll kick it around. Let's do this zone. Look at that, oh, but man, you gotta check this out. So this is that, this is that gunk stuff. There you go. See that? That we gotta get cleaned up. So right now I'm just gonna wipe away at least what we've already hit with the cordless polisher. And then I'm gonna come back with some new power right on top of that new Paul. I'm going to take that right on to our spot and then I'm going to just hit it with a, a substantial dose of it and it almost immediately starts lifting. So nice. Definitely rewarding. Another benefit of the new Paul is it just shows up so readily where it needs a second a second pass. Definitely not guessing. It's like, yep, that looks amazing. Oh, that looks like it needs some work. Dope. So yeah, this is how it's looking. And there's all the dirty stuff that we have yet to do. But overall, Glorious. So, this is the Saker Orbital, random orbital polisher cordless, handheld. Um, low motor is definitely warm. I use it for probably about a total of 30, 35 minutes. Uh, if I turn it on, we're down to orange and red. It was getting down to red for the amount of battery life left, and that means when you're needing to charge it. So I'd recommend if you do decide to go with one of these, and you can grab the link to this. Uh, it's an Amazon affiliate link, so thanks for supporting the channel. Um, I would get a pack or package, and I'll try to link to one that might have two of these 2000 milliamp hour batteries, because if you're doing a lot of polishing and you're done, you gotta put a stop to it and go do something else, which might not be a bad thing. But if you wanna keep going, it'd be nice to have one of these on backup so that you could swap it in. Now, one downside to anything like this is if you already have a tool system, like a Makita, DeWalt, Milwaukee, whatever, that has a bunch of these types of batteries, I like, having one system, right? Maybe two systems if a couple of them are really good and better than the system that you're really wedded to battery-wise. Uh, I'm a Makita person. That's what I started with. That's what I just keep using for their team bolt. So if you're thinking about doing that, this is another battery you gotta manage, another uh, adapter you gotta plug in somewhere. But for 99 bucks, with the things it comes, comes with, it's pretty nice. It made it a lot easier to manage the new Paul, new power. This is an airport, so we actually have planes flying around here. Uh, applying the new power to get all the grime and gunk from underneath the belly of the 206. Uh, this was really nice, because normally I'd have to do that with one hand, rubbing it all on, slopping around, having a rag hit me and getting stuff all over me. I only got a tiny bit of stuff on me, I think, this time with this orbital. Um, and it was because I was pulling it off of the body of the plane. 
but when I kept it up on there, it didn't actually fling a whole bunch. I didn't put too much on. I tried to spread it around and you know, I'm actually relatively clean, shockingly, for the amount of closeness I was to the gunk and grime underneath that plane. But it's nice, it's lightweight enough. Uh, it felt comfortable in the hand to use. I didn't use anything below a number five on the side, so if you maybe if you use a lower speed, that it might last a bit longer, probably another 10 minutes. Um, I'm still a major fan of this new power, so I highly recommend going with the new power too for cleaning any of your undercarriage <laughs> on your plane and keeping it fresh down there. So thanks for, very much for watching. Definitely check out the link to the Saker Random Orbital Buffer Polisher Cordless. And thanks for subscribing and watching these videos. Have a great day.